Hey guys, good morning, what's going on? Uh, Abdel Kouatmi here, your favorite mortgage lender. Uh, coming to you guys, again, what I'm going to be doing every single Tuesday is providing you guys with Tuesday tips, as I like to call them, with your favorite mortgage lender, myself. We're gonna touch base today in regards to the topic, which is known as debt to income, okay? Debt to income is a very, very important topic that we all need to keep in mind whether you're a client or a real estate professional who is currently in the process of searching for a home. Last week, we spoke about credit. What is the typical consumer's credit score that needs to be obtained in order to qualify for a mortgage, along with some secrets as well. What we're going to talk about today is debt to income, how to calculate it if you're a consumer or a real estate professional, and then in addition, also understanding how the impact of it plays a role in different programs that you're currently looking to get, whether it's an FHA loan, a conventional loan, or even a VA loan, USDA loans, and some other programs out there, okay? So what is debt to income? Also known as the acronym DTI, okay? So DTI is as important for your overall financial health. It is essentially how much debt do you currently own? By debt, I mean revolving debt monthly obligations and we're not going to go over also importantly not just things that report on your credit but in addition obligations that you may have such as alimony child support or any type of irs lien that is going to be having a monthly installment payment agreed upon okay so calculating your dti you guys would actually be surprised it's super super simple um, I do teach this to a lot of my students also through mortgage licensing, the best way to do it until this day, even though we have automated systems through Encompass and other platforms, I like to do it manually by hand as technology is sometimes our greatest friend and our greatest enemy as well. Okay, so calculating your debt to income guys, here is the formula, okay? The first steps that you're going to do, and I'm gonna break it down in three steps, okay? I do have an educational PowerPoint that I have put together. For those of you guys who are watching right now or those of you guys who will watch later when I post this, you guys can simply reach out to me directly, whether it's through a message on social media or give me a call or an email, and I'll be more than happy to share the PowerPoint with you guys so you could share with yourselves or individually with your friends and family along with your clients, okay? So step one, when you're calculating your debt to income, the first thing that you want to do as a consumer is add up all of your monthly bills. And by monthly bills, I mean your minimum balances for your credit cards, installment notes, car notes, or anything of that nature that you may have currently reporting to your credit. Okay, so what you would do is you can obtain a copy of your credit report for free. There's a website called annualcreditreport.com. This will give you the opportunity to go online. You have access to it for free once a year through the Fair Credit Reporting Act. You can go online and get a free copy of your credit report and you can take a look at it and analyze it. What you are adding is not the balances that you currently have. If that was the case, nobody would qualify for a mortgage. What you add is the minimum monthly payments that you make towards your credit cards, car notes, installment notes, and in addition, you will also take a look at what's called your monthly mortgage payment, okay? So your proposed monthly mortgage payment. So let's say, for example, you're looking for a $250,000 house. As simple as going online and searching for a mortgage calculator, you could also visit my website, gotmortgagesnj.com, or my team's mortgageplugs.com. We have very interactive mortgage calculators that will give you guys the opportunity to at least estimate what your proposed mortgage payment is going to be based on property taxes, home estimate of the value, $200,000 home, $300,000 home, home insurance, mortgage insurance, and so on and so forth, okay? So you will also, in addition, add, if it's applicable, your monthly alimony, child support, student, auto loans, and monthly loan payments. I did speak with some of us previously when I did a podcast as well in regards to student loans and how we calculate that very, very quickly. It just recently changed. FHA, if you're not on a payment plan, you can now take a 0.5% of the balance. And then if it's a conventional loan, you're either on a payment plan or simultaneously you take 1% of the balance. So if you owe $200,000, then you would essentially put a $2,000 payment, just like if you owe $30,000, it would be a $300 payment, 
okay? And then again, credit card payments or other debts that may be reporting on your credit. Now, exact, make sure you're aware also expenses like utility bills, PSENG, Suez, or anything of that nature does not get included when you're calculating your DTI. I'm gonna go over a few very quick, frequently asked questions that I've put together, but for now, that would be step one. Step two would be to get what your total gross monthly income is, depending on the loan program that you're looking to get, either averaging out a two-year history or getting an offer letter with your new payment will give you the opportunity to get what's called your GMI, your gross monthly income, okay? Once you have that, the second step would be for you to add up all of your monthly debt, including the proposed payment for the mortgage, and then dividing it by your gross monthly income. So it's your total debt divided by your gross monthly income. It will give you a percentage. That percentage is the number that you want to keep in mind when you're looking to purchase a home. And I'm going to go over a few programs that the percentages are currently set in order to understand if you do qualify for them or not. And then the last step, like I said, is you get that percentage and you would cross compare it and find out if you are eligible to qualify for a mortgage or if there's certain strategies that you need to do, such as paying off some of those monthly debts in order to be able to qualify, okay? Now, the lower that your DTI is, the lesser of the percentage, the less riskier you are, the more of ability you have to qualify, and most importantly, the more competitive that your interest rate is gonna be, the more home that you're able to obtain, and simultaneously, the easier it is for you, for your mortgage professional, to be able to actually qualify you guys because you now have a very low debt to income ratio on top of that, okay? The next thing I want to talk about is the actual DTI ranges, okay? So when we're going over DTI ranges, again, this is a very, very general consensus. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no specific guidelines, but anybody who I look at who has a DTI of 35% or less is very, very good in regards to their revolve, uh, relativeness of their income, their debt, and they're at a very manageable level with their debt. Anybody who's between 36% to 45% has an opportunity to improve. Okay, they are able to qualify, but they have a very good opportunity to improve. And then any consumer who's 50% or really 46% and above, it currently needs, has limited ability to qualify, but simultaneously does still have the ability to qualify depending on what they have revolved. Now going over specific programs very quickly, um, the, the ratios that I'm going to give you is based off of what's called a QM patch that's currently in pace. The ratios in reality are actually less. When I teach them to my students for an FHA loan, it's actually a 31% slash 43%. So you guys remember when I was talking earlier, your debt to income for your, there's two different ratios that you need to keep in mind. There's what's called a front end ratio, which is just your mortgage payment divided by your gross monthly income. And then your back end ratio is the one we spoke about when we first started this call. It is your total debt, which is your gross monthly income. I'm sorry, your, um, your gross debt, entire debt, plus that proposed mortgage payment. You combine that number to get your total debt, and then you divide it by your gross monthly income. Okay, so for an FHA loan, the standard practice is 3143. Currently, with the QM patch, in order to qualify for an FHA loan, subject to other factors as well, in addition, not just qualifying via DTI, but also with credit, home type, and so on and so forth, for an FHA loan, the debt to income is actually a 46.9% slash 56.9%. That's a huge difference. That's almost a 15% difference in the front, and I believe it's an estimated almost 20% difference in the back. So, I'm sorry, 15% as well. So 15% in both ends. So 31, 43. 31 means what? That's your front end ratio, that's your mortgage payment divided by your gross monthly income. And then your back end ratio is essentially your total debt divided by your income. Okay, so FHA guys, once again, is 46 slash 56%. And then when we look at a conventional loan, a conventional loan, generally, you're looking at roughly a 49% slash 49%, okay? The actual, this is with the QM patch. Before the QM patch, it's actually a 28 slash 36%. So it's a huge, huge difference. You know, If we were to actually try and qualify people without this QM patch, 
we wouldn't have that many homeowners. You know, we wouldn't be experiencing the mortgage boom that we're dealing with right now with the real estate market. Okay, so again, a conventional loan is 49% slash 49%. Conventional is a little bit different too. A lot of contributing factors that come into place. Some clients actually can't even qualify for more than 45% in the back. It all depends on when we run you through an automated system called desktop underwriting through Fannie Mae, they will advise us if we need to work on the ratios in order to reduce them or if we were to take a look at it and see if we can qualify. So if you are an average consumer, again, these are max ratios. You want to try your best to when you are approaching a mortgage professional or at least getting advice from any mortgage professional, you want to be able to keep your ratios as low as possible. And then VA USDA guys, they're both actually at 41% debt to income. So keep that in mind when you are qualifying or looking to get a VA or USDA loan. It's a little bit less than what it is for a conventional and an FHA loan. Okay. And then a couple frequently asked questions that I've kind of put down together, which is the first one is why is debt to income so important? And the reality is mortgage lenders use this debt to income in a way for us to measure what's called your ATR which is a huge thing that lenders after the market crash now look into. It's not just stability of job. Uh, it's not just if you have a good credit score. It is your ability to repay the loan. What is your ability to manage your payments, whether it's through all revolving creditors you've had in the past, now for another creditor, new mortgage lender, to be able to provide you for you to make payments every single month, okay? So again, the formula, guys, for your debt to income, for your front end ratio, it is your mortgage payment divided by your gross monthly income. And for your back end ratio, which is your total debt, which is your mortgage payment, plus your minimum revolving debt on your credit and alimony, child support, and so on and so forth, you divide that by your gross monthly income. Okay. Monthly payments, again, that are included in DTI, guys, a couple things. Your mortgage payment, your monthly expense for real estate taxes if you actually own the home and it's not escrowed. Your car payments, your student loans, credit cards, timeshare is a big one too if you have a timeshare. Monthly personal loan payments, child support in addition, uh, monthly alimony, and then co-signed loan monthly payments. There are actually a few um, wiggle room around that. If you're a co-signer on a loan and you don't actually pay it and you can prove 12 months of consistent payments that you are not the one paying for it, as the co-signer is paying for it, and you have nothing to do with that account, are not on the same, you can actually exclude that payment. But that's a different conversation that we can have. Um, payments that should not be included in your DTI, as I said, is car insurance, utility, water, electricity, even cell phone bills, home health insurance costs, so on. So those are not included in your debt to income ratios. Um, payments that you should use for your credit card debts, again, the payments that we use, like I said, is not your balances of your credit card and mortgages, it's, uh, or your credit cards, it's actually your minimum monthly payments of that that, that creditor that you have that you currently would pay if you owe 500 bucks, they usually have you pay like 40 or $50, you would use that 40 or $50 and add that towards your debt to calculate your DTI. Uh, sources of income, guys, is a big one. So uh, if you're on a salary, wages, bonus, commissions, Social Security, alimony, child support, which is a big one because those are generally non-taxable. You can grow some 125%. But the main thing, guys, when it comes to calculating your income is they need to be consistent. There cannot be any large different variations between them. Very, very minimal gaps, which has kind of been a little bit of a loophole because of COVID. But you have to make sure that there's a consistency. It doesn't have to be the same job. That's what a lot of people sometimes confuse. Two-year history is required, but it does not have to be the same job. You can work for, for multiple jobs in between as long as you can provide your lender with a timeline in regards to the jobs that you have transitioned to. You now have the ability to be able to go ahead and qualify. Okay. And then again, guys, what's considered a DTI? So we want to, I gave you guys the real ratios. Once again, I'm going to repeat it one more time. FHA currently with the QM patch is a 46, 56% debt to income ratio. Okay. How do we calculate our debt to income ratio? We add up our total debt and then we divide it by our gross monthly income. Conventional is generally at a 49, 49% subjected to the lender getting a desktop underwriting approval. And then uh, for a VA loan and a USDA loan, you're looking at a 41% debt to income ratio all across the board. That's about it. Um, I'm going to post this video on Instagram, Facebook, and my YouTube channel. If you guys have any questions whatsoever and you would like for me to share the PowerPoint that I've presented, you're more than welcome to give me a call directly or shoot me a message and I'll be more than happy to help you guys. Thanks for tuning in guys and I look forward to working with you guys. Have a blessed day.